Joining me now is Larry Lindsay. He is president and CEO of the Lindsay Group and former director of the National Economic Council under President George W. Bush. Larry, it's good to see you again. Welcome back. It's great to be here, Kelly. I'm going to assume that you disagree, but to, to there's many people out there who go, tell me why, if deflation was the worry going into the pandemic, why at some point we won't be back to deflation as we move through and put it all in the rearview mirror? Um, well, two reasons. Uh, the first is that we have excess demand. Uh, we were roughly balanced in terms of the demand and supply uh, through 2020. Uh, and then we passed a bill that was much too big in um, March of last year. And if you just take a look at the CPI, you can see that is exactly when inflation took off. Um, now, I do agree with half of what she said. Um, I do think we're going to have a recession probably starting next quarter. But the reason is going to be inflation. Inflation is eating into consumer spending power. They're going to have to cut back. I was uh, going to tweet that because quite a, a statement to say you think we're going into recession next quarter. But like you said, you think it's because of inflation. So you're saying it's too late for the Fed. I mean, should they still try? It sounds like they have to then still try to bring the inflation rate down. But will they risk this aggressive tightening right as real demand, like you said, is, is slowing? And where does that then leave us? Kelly, it's not really aggressive tightening. I, I'm not calling for that. It's appropriate. We've got to get there. There has never been significant disinflation since the early 50s, with the Treasury Fed Accord, without the CPI being lower than the Fed funds rate. Okay, the Fed funds rate is now 50 bips. Inflation is now 8%. We are nowhere close, nowhere close to being able to control inflation with what we have. And the pressures are probably going to be that inflation is going to tick up. Um, I'm very worried about having, you know, one to one and a half monthly uh, inflation prints. That's going to push consumer purchasing power down about two points. Mm. On top of the two and a half points, it's already declined since the beginning of 2021. You can't uh, have the consumer absorb that much of a shock quickly without having a recession. And you've said that we need to start getting those monthly CPI increments down to like three tenths of a percent. Like that's what to watch for if the Fed's actually going to reach the goals it wants to reach and be able to have a, a soft landing. And we're running at three X that pace right now. So it's a lot to come down. Even Goldman, which is pretty bearish on the economy, they think, you know, we're only going to see about one percent, you know, GDP growth this year, Q4 over Q4. And they're saying they still aren't sure that's going to be enough for the Fed to hit uh, its inflation targets. Oh, oh, no. Not only do we need to have the uh, Fed funds rate above CPI, we've never had a disinflation without a recession. So you really be defying history this time if, uh, if we somehow escaped without a recession and without very, very significant hikes in the Fed funds rate. Isn't this different because it's a pandemic, though, for those who say, OK, I take your point, but this cycle is different because we did have a pandemic going into it. And so, you know, we hear this from a lot of different people. We'll see the goods prices normalize. You know, we'll see things kind of drift back to normal. And intuitively, most people sense it's all going to be fine, you know, 18 months out. Inflation did not pick up until March of 2021. The pandemic started in 20 a year earlier so i don't i think that created some stresses it created some uh, supply bottlenecks but when you pour demand massive amounts of demand on top of that you can't help but have inflation and that's what we're going through now um also and this is why it's going to be tough the inflation is built into a wage price spiral you can talk to any business person out there that is exactly what they're facing their costs are going up, their wages are going up, and their job is to maintain their margins. And that is the very definition of a wage price spiral. 